Hello and welcome back to Car Rental University. I am your host, Alex Witherow. Today we're going to talk about five different mistakes that I made early on as a car share entrepreneur and you're going to get a whole history lesson on how this whole industry has changed in the last seven years. Before I get into that, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. This also has access to the uh, car rental market report and you get um, access to all kinds of uh, private webinars that I hold when you download that PDF. So let's get into it. Five different mistakes that I made. As a young car rental entrepreneur, I started my business back in 2016 when very little was going on in the car share world at the time. I was also in New York City. So at the time in New York City, uh, you could not run Turo, you could not run Get Around. Hire Car tried to penetrate their way in and they got sued to oblivion. So uh, it was kind of a unique time in New York City for car rentals. But let me kind of just take you through some of the um, things that um, I went through and what were some big mistakes for me. So first of all, oh, no GPS trackers. There were no GPS trackers. No one had GPS trackers on their cars. So um, that is, a, anyone out there, I've heard a, a handful of influencers online talk about the fact that you don't need a GPS tracker. You need a GPS tracker, trust me. When you're Talk to me after your car's been gone for two weeks. Then we'll then we'll see how you feel about GPS trackers. Um, <laughs> so all I have to say, um, you know, back when I first started this business, um, I you know most of you that I talk to are very good at researching this business through YouTube. I I'm more of a just dive in head first kind of guy and uh, fix things as we go, which that um, has its pros and its cons with it, but. Uh, the good news is, is that I saw an opportunity and I just went for it really early on. Um, and I was very ahead of the curve on this industry uh, compared to most people who are now finding this industry within the last year or two. Um, but so I've been doing this for seven years, so I've seen how it's all evolved. So that said, you definitely want a GPS tracker on your car. You also want one with a kill switch. That is very important. Trust me, you're gonna need it at some point. It is very, very helpful to have that. Number two, so this is the thing. Dealing with car insurance back in 2016 with rentals was pretty much a nightmare. The problem with this is that there just were no products for, for car sharing. There wasn't even ride share insurance at that point. So, you know, uh, basically if you wanted to be an Uber driver, and especially in New York City, you had to have commercial insurance, which is fairly expensive. Uh, now, at least we have, you know, drivers can at least get, you know, ride share insurance. Um, but in terms of car sharing or off rental protection, like ABI or, um, you know, uh, Lula, all that stuff, th that wasn't really around back then. Uh, ABI came in a little later, um, not too much later, but so ABI was a nice addition to this whole thing. But um, you know, early on, I was just putting drivers on too many drivers on my insurance policy with like Geico or Progressive. Big mistake. They, 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 right off the bat, they were like, no, you can't put all these drivers on your, on your policy. You know, we, we're not going to go for this. We don't like this. So, uh, you know, their traditional insurance is just very fussy about this sort of thing. So, um, I always say, you know, if you want to put a driver or two on your own policy for a private agreement, you know, maybe up to four or five, no big deal. But if, you, if you're trying to scale beyond that, they need to bring their own livery insurance. So, um, and then, you know, nowadays we at least have a lot more options with Lula, with uh, ABI, with CarSync. I mean, there, there's just way more options now. It's way better than 2016. Number three, no technology to handle tickets or tolls. So, you know, the first time I remember talking to Get Around when I was one of the first Get Around hosts in North Jersey, um, they told me the Connect system automatically charges the renter uh, for tolls. And I was like, what? This is amazing. Um, because in the old days, I basically have, would tell renters, you got to bring your own fob to pl put up on the car uh, to, to, for tolls. And many times they would just ignore me and not do that. And so I'd get a bunch of tickets sent to my apartment. That was super annoying. Nowadays, it's easy peasy. You just, you know, the Connect system kind of handles it all. Uh, they, they still haven't like automated the whole like camera ticket thing yet. I think that will come soon. But 
Um, you know, and if you live outside New York City, this really isn't, a, this is more of a non-issue, but uh, inside New York City, um, you know, this was definitely more challenging and still is to this day. Uh, number four, spending too much on a car. I actually did a good job on this for the most part, but there was one car that I spent too much on. So I had my first, in my first three years, I got five cars. Um, I had a Toyota Camry, which was just dirt cheap and already had like 120,000 miles on it. And so I drove that thing into the ground uh, or a renter did, uh, and I got it up to about 190, 200,000 miles. So that was just donezo, right? Um, and then I also got my first purchase after that was, um, a Toyota Highlander. Highlander uh, Highlanders are fantastic cars for rideshare um, uh, drivers because they get the XL bonus when they drive for Uber. So Highlanders are very popular amongst Uber drivers. Uh, then I got two Honda Accords. The Honda Accords never let me down. I got them both for around 25K uh, back in 2018, 19. Um, and um, you know, basically the both Honda Accords did fantastically well with rideshare and on get around. Uh, they still do very well on get around. Um, and then I've got uh, the, the Maxima, the Nissan Maxima. The Maxima is the one I paid a little too much for. I bought that car for about 45K. Um, it had nice black, you know, uh, leather seats. And my thinking was, I'm gonna give this to an Uber driver who wants to do Uber black. And that's how I'm going to sell this car. And that actually worked for the first year and a half. And I had a guy who was driving for Uber Black. And I sold it to him as an Uber Black car. And um, I, made, I was charging him $500 a week <clears throat> for that car. And so I made at least half that money back um, in the first year and a half. Um, but that car has struggled on, uh, get around as w and it, it does okay on Turo, but, um, it's, it's, I, that car has been better for private agreements, um, and, and Uber drivers. So, um, I always say you want to get a car that hits multiple categories really well, whether it be Uber drivers, vacation renters, etc. So that's why the Honda Accords always uh, did really well, as well as uh, the uh, the Highlander. So, but you, I always say you don't want to spend more than like, for my taste, I don't like to spend more than 25, 30K on a car. Um, I like to, I don't want to get too over leveraged. These are rentals. They get beat up quite a bit. That's just kind of how it goes. All right. Um, last one not having a good process for vetting private renters. So I had, you know, I've dealt with a lot of private renters over the years. Um, these days I'm pretty, I don't really have many issues anymore because I'm just, I've, I've got this down to a science and an art form. Um, but I have dealt with some serious a-holes over the years. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've had about two or three guys try to steal my cars, big, you know, lots of non-payment issues. Uh, the beauty of this whole system and this whole industry now is that the technology has evolved so much since 2016 that you really don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. You know, if you're dealing with hire car, obviously a lot of people in hire car are just disasters. The hire car's on its way out. You know, Turo's renters and, and clientele, very, very good, very, you know, they take care of those cars really well. They probably have the best clientele. Get Around's clientele is not that far behind uh, the, the Turo renters. Um, and get around now even has their risk technology system, so they can they they can really see very clearly how risky a driver is or not, and they'll decide whether they'll allow them to drive your car or not based on the amount of deposit that they charge. So um, you know the system now is it, it's it's kind of just taking the human element uh, out of it. Uh, I still deal with you know private renters on occasion. Um, and, and like I said, like, it's not really, I, I can tell within a phone conversation if somebody's good or not, but, um, you know, I, I think that it's the kind of thing where the, the technology in this industry has evolved so much. It's so much better. And this is like really gotten to the place now where you can really scale this. It's awesome in that regard. So, um, you know, so those were five of mistakes I made early on. Uh, school, big time school of hard knocks, especially in New York City. New York City does not make anything easier, especially in car rentals. Um, you know, someday I'll tell you guys a story about when I went down to DMV. 
<laughs> oh man, New York DMV, what a mess. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, any comments, drop them below. We'd love to hear more about what you think. And also, um, uh, download the PDF, The Five Things You Must Do Before Starting a Car Rental Business. It has the market report, and it also gives you access to all kinds of private webinars. All that to say, I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you.